These 10 applications for macOS have been a game changer for my productivity, efficiency and peace of mind. Without a further ado, let's get straight into the list. At number 1 we have Things by Cultured Code and it's my absolute favorite personal task management app. I've been using Things since 2019, so over 5 years now, and it's the app I rely on every single day and it never disappoints. Things is available on all Apple devices and it's a one-time purchase which is a blessing in the world of subscriptions. It goes without saying how gorgeous looking this app is, so no surprise it won the Apple Design Award twice. One of the things I love in Things is that you can set two separate days for a task. When you intend to work on that task and a deadline, which as you can imagine quite different things. Let's say I need to file a corporate tax return and the deadline for this task is the end of March next year. But doing that on the very last day is a bit unreasonable, so I can say that I want to do that thing next Tuesday, which means this task will appear in my today's view on that Tuesday, which is very handy. There are plenty of other features I love in things, so I might do a separate video about this app specifically as a sort of a beginner's guide. Next, at number 2, we have the app called IA Writer. First of all, it's a note-taking app with a one-off purchase model, and I think the price tag makes it a bit controversial given that some alternatives like the built-in Apple Notes are completely free. But what makes the difference for me is the writing experience. As you start typing, the interface fades away, giving you a perfect blank canvas to express your thoughts. Another thing I love in Writer is a built-in style checker, which can highlight filler words like basically, redundancies like basic fundamentals, and cliches like as a matter of fact. All notes in the Writer app are stored locally as text files and I like it because the app doesn't lock you within its application like many other note-taking apps do. And by the way, I wrote all the recent posts on my blog in the Writer app first. Overall, if you enjoy writing and minimalism, you're likely to go on to love this app, though I can understand that it's probably not for everyone. Next, at number 3, we have Notion. And if you're not familiar with this app, the best way I can describe it is this is an app for building your own app. You can use Notion as a project management tool, as accounting software, as a knowledge management platform, as CRM and so much more. I think the biggest strength of Notion is the ability to create databases, link databases together and then create custom views for particular data of those databases. Personally, I use Notion for all sorts of purposes, for content creation, a record label pipeline, gigs, releases, as a goal planner, as a workout tracker, the home collections like books, plans, Lego, bookmarks and much more. The flexibility and potential use cases of Notion are just mind-blowing. I'd say it's even a bit too scary how good this app is, so in the future I might consider moving some of my content out of Notion for the sake of diversification, as they say, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Up next on the list of my favorite apps comes Screen Studio, a beautiful screen recorder. Screen Studio is an elegant and easy-to-use software, which at the same time packed with great features. First of all, it allows you to record a screen, a webcam, a microphone and system audio without any hassle of creating separate scenes or audio routing like in some other apps. Once the recording is done, you can then adjust the way it looks. Choose a different aspect ratio, select a different background, adjust the size of the screen, adjust the size of the position of the webcam, change the zoom effects, change mouse cursor and so much more. I use Screen Studio to create videos for my Patreon, for my YouTube channel and in fact I'm recording this very video using Screen Studio as well. I love how frictionless the process is, so I can just press record and edit the recording right within the Screen Studio. The app might seem a bit pricey, but it's a one-time purchase and it's totally worth it in my opinion. Next up on my list is Raycast, one of my favorite productivity apps for Mac. Raycast is like a supercharged version of Spotlight, but way more powerful. It's a simple app that lets you do almost anything without touching the mouse. You can launch apps, search files, check your calendar, create tasks and even control the smart lights all from your keyboard. What makes Raycast stand out is its speed and the fact that you can customize it to fit your workflow. You can set up hotkeys and extensions and create custom commands to automate repetitive tasks. For developers, Raycast is a dream come true with integration for tools like GitHub and Jira in VS Code. Raycast also has a built-in clipboard manager, a simple calculator and even a quick way to manage your window layouts. Whether you're a developer, a designer or just someone who loves being efficient, Raycast is a must-have. 
I even control the Spotify player and add tracks to my collection using the Raycast. Once you start using it, you'll wonder how you ever worked without it. Next on my list is Reader, the best RSS reader I've come across for staying on top of my favorite blogs. If you're not familiar with RSS, it stands for Really Simple Syndication, and it's a way to get updates from websites in one place without having to visit each site individually. You subscribe to a site's feed, and new content is delivered straight to your RSS reader. It's like having your own personal use feed, basically. And a Reader is an app that brings all your RSS feeds together in a one beautiful, easy to read place. It's super clean and minimal, which makes reading a pleasure. Whether you're a Catching up on tech news, checking out the latest blog posts, or just browsing headliners, Reader has you covered. You can use a reader with services like Feedly, Feedbean, or use it without any third-party services, just local RSS feeds. It's quick to set up, and once you added your sources, everything stays in sync across your Mac and iPhone. One of the best features is offline reading. Reader downloads your articles so you can catch up anytime, even without an internet connection. There is also dark mode, reader view, and customizable themes to make reading even easier on the eyes. If you like staying informed, and want a simple yet powerful way to read your favorite content without going to the news websites, Reader is a must-have app. It's fast, flexible, and makes reading on the internet a pleasurable experience again. It costs $10 for the Mac and $5 for the iPhone version, which seems pretty reasonable. Up next is TimeMater, a powerful time-tracking app that makes keeping track of your work hours easy and efficient. If you're someone who needs to track time for projects, whether you're a freelancer or a remote worker or just looking to boost your productivity, Time Matter is an awesome tool. What makes it special is its automation feature. You can set up rules to automatically start and stop timers based on the apps you're using, files you're working on, or even that websites you visit. For example, if you're working on a design in Photoshop or coding in Xcode, Time Matter can start tracking your time that moment you open the app. When you switch tasks, it automatically switches with you. This means you can focus on your work while Time Matter quietly keeps track of everything in the background. Time Matter also provides detailed reports and insights so you can see how your time is being spent. You can break down your hours by project, task or client, which is perfect for billing or just understanding your workflow better. If you're looking for a way to take the hassle out of time tracking and get more done, give TimeMeta a try. TimeMeta is available for $39, again with a one-off purchase, which as you can probably realize by now is a common thing among most of the apps I use. Next on my list is Arc, a browser that is not just different but better in so many ways. One thing I really appreciate about Arc is how it manages profiles. Switching between different profiles like work and personal is incredibly smooth and intuitive. It's a simple feature, but it makes a big difference in keeping things organized. Arc also shakes up the traditional tab layer. Out. Instead of having tabs across the top, they're on the left sidebar. It felt a bit unusual at first, but now I actually prefer it as it makes managing open tabs feel more organized and accessible. Another little but cool feature is the ability to copy a website address without ETM parameters. It's really handy for sharing clean links without all the extra tracking info cluttering things up. And Arc also includes a few features that are worth noting. It has built-in tools for organizing bookmarks and managing your browsing history in a more visual way. And if you like customizing your browser, Arc's options for themes and extensions are pretty flexible. Overall, Arc offers a refreshing take on web browsing. It's got some neat features that make it stand out from the crowd, and if you're up for trying something a bit different, it might be worth checking it out. Up next on the list is 1Password, which I've been using since 2016 for almost a decade, which is pretty crazy. 1Password, in case you don't know, is all about managing your passwords and sensitive info securely. It doesn't just store passwords, though. It can handle credit card details, secure notes, and even documents. It's like having a digital safe for all of your important stuff. One feature I find super useful that I use all the time is the password generator. It helps you to create strong random passwords with just a few clicks, which is a huge plus for security. And then the autofill feature is great, because it automatically fills all your login details across websites and apps, saving you tons of time. Organizing your info is super easy too. You can set up different vaults to keep things like work and personal details separate, so everything neat and easy to find. And just a heads up, one password works on a subscription model. It's a paid service, but for the security and features it offers, I think it's worth it. Last but not least, at number 10 we have Apple Mail, the built-in email app for macOS. One thing I really appreciate about Apple Mail is how distraction-free it is. Unlike web-based email services like Gmail, which can be cluttered with ads and extra stuff, Apple Mail keeps things simple and clean. There are no third bars full of ads and endless promotions, just your email and straightforward interface. I've actually been using Apple Mail since the day I switched to Mac, which was way back in 2011. And over the years, it's become a reliable part of my daily routine. Of course, it's not perfect. There are occasional quirks and limitations, but for the most part, it gets the job done. And so far, I haven't found anything better 
even though I tried a bunch of different email platforms. Apple Mail also offers useful features like smart mailboxes for organizing emails automatically and a search function that helps you to find what you need quickly. So while it might not have every single feature out there, Apple Mail provides a straightforward and destruction-free environment for managing your emails. Its clean design and integration with macOS make a solid choice if you prefer a simple, focused email experience. And that wraps up my list of 10 essential macOS applications that I'm using every day. If you would like to boost your productivity and focus on the things that matter the most, you might find valuable another video that I created explaining my productivity framework. In that video, I cover my approach to goals, values, projects, quarterly planning and weekly reviews. Check it out this over here. And well, bye for now and I'll see you next time.